This video is sponsored by Squarespace. DaVinci Resolve 18.5 is now live and it's made certain things just a little bit easier for everyone. Now we're not talking the big headline studio only features like the automatic subtitles, but small little improvements which just help to improve and speed up your workflow. One new feature makes it much easier to do circle masks just like this, but it wasn't quite good enough so I've made a free little preset which just takes it to the next level, but more on that a little bit later. Now pretty much everything we cover in this video is available on the free version, but I have put in some nice little gems for those people on the studio version as well, but it'll all be labeled nice and clear, which is which. So the first one, vertical videos. Doing vertical videos or vertical timelines within DaVinci Resolve just got a little bit easier due to a change in the default mismatched resolution behavior. Now, when you create a vertical timeline, it now defaults to scale full frame with crop, which means if you drag horizontal video on there, you don't get the black bars at the top and the bottom. Instead, it will automatically zoom in so that it fits on that vertical resolution. It just makes life much easier. So if I just drop some horizontal video directly onto my timeline, you can see it's automatically zoomed in so that it fully fills the frame. It will just crop off the left and the right. Then all we need to do is change the position to get it where we want it. Now, if you're on the studio version, life gets even easier thanks to something called Smart Reframe. You see here, this snowboarder goes off the screen, so we'd have to manually change the position. But if you're on studio, all you need to do, click on Smart Reframe and then hit Reframe. It'll analyze the clip, find the subject for you, and automatically change the position left and right. So now if we hit play, this snowboarder is always going to be within the frame. Next up, we have exporting stills. Now I've covered this, I've mentioned it in every video I've done about DaVinci Resolve 18.5, but it's always worth mentioning because it's just super handy. From the cut page, the edit page, and the color pages, you can now simply click on file, go to export, and export the current frame as still. You can then choose your format. We've got things like JPEGs and PNGs, and you can simply export the current preview window as a still image. Next up, we have something called Smart Collections, which is available to everyone, and then Audio Classification, which is restricted to the studio version. But both things are useful for everyone. Now, the free version of Smart Collections will simply filter everything you put within your media pool into audio and video folders, which again, you could do before if you'd set up your own smart bins, but now it just does it all automatically for you. Again, just saving you a tiny bit of time. So here's my media pool. We've got videos and music and sound effects within here. And down here, you can see my smart bin. If you don't see smart bins, click on these three dots and then just tick show smart bins and these smart bins will appear. If we open this up, we now have something new called collections. If we expand that, at the very top, there's video clips and audio only. So if we click on video clips, here's all of my videos. And if we go to audio only, Here's all of the audio that's currently been imported into the project. Now, if you don't actually see collections, click on DaVinci Resolve top left and go to preferences, then go to user editing, and just make sure to tick automatic smart bin collections. While you're here, I also highly recommend that you tick smart bin for timelines. That puts this timeline smart bin within your smart bins, so you never have to go searching for your timelines again. They're always available from this handy little folder. Now, if you're on the studio version, you can take this one step further with something called audio classification. This will scan through all of your audio and then put it into additional folders like music, sound effects, or dialogue. It can even go and keyword things to make it even easier to find stuff. So I've got a folder here called audio and within here we've got music, sound effects and dialogue. I'm simply going to highlight everything, right click, audio classification and then hit analyze. That's going to analyze all of those clips and then within the collections we now have dialogue and any audio which is purely dialogue will be in there. I have music for all my music, I've got effects and then we've got silence so it's automatically filtered it through. If we come down to subcategories We've got things like animals, cheering, clicking, crowd, dialogue, dog effects, explosions. So if we go to effects, here's all my sound effects. If we go to cheering, here's the cheering. If we click on the individual audio and then go to the metadata, click this top right hand button to go to the audio. And then within subcategories, we can see the keywords which have been assigned. Super duper clever. Next up, 
stabilize multiple clips. Again, this is one I've mentioned multiple times, but it bears repeating because it's just so easy to explain and it's super useful. Basically, now we don't need to stabilize things individually. On your timeline, just highlight whatever you need, then open the inspector, go to stabilize, and it will stabilize all of those clips for you rather than having to do this manually one by one. That's available on the free version, the studio version, every single version of DaVinci Resolve 18.5 winner. Now before we jump into the next one, I just need to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Squarespace. You all probably know about Squarespace by now, right? It's the all-in-one platform to grow your online business. Whether you need a website to showcase your portfolio, sell physical or digital products in an online store, or arrange one-to-one -one consultations with scheduling tools, Squarespace has everything you need all in one place. Plus, it's super easy to set up even easier to use, and there's loads of great templates to pick from and customize to your liking. So if you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply head over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to start your free trial. There is a link down in the description below. And then when you're ready to launch, use the code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Simple. Next up, the Multi Merge tool. This is a brand new tool that sits within Fusion. It's available for free and studio users, and it works just like the old Merge tool did, but it allows for way more inputs, meaning you don't need as many nodes and it just makes life way easier. So previously, if I wanted a colored background, I'd drop a background on there and it would create a merge for us. And then if I wanted text on there, I'd pop text on there and we've now got a another merge, just put some text in there. And let's pretend we wanted another text as well. So we'll pop that one over here. And now we've got a third merge tool. And there we go. Now that can get confusing really quite quickly. Let's delete all of these. Instead, now with the multi merge tool, let's click on media in one. We're going to hit control and space to open up our select tool. We'll search for multi and click add. We have this single multi merge node. So now let's drag my background on. We'll grab my text on and my other text on, and we can just do it all within one single node. So let's say we also wanted another background. So let's grab this one, we'll make it red. We're gonna do a circle mask and we'll drag this one in there like so. So now we've got four different things going to this multi-merge. If we give it a click within the inspector, you can see all of your individual layers and we can toggle them off really quickly and easily and we can reorder them. So at the moment, my red circle is on top. If I click and drag, I can move this underneath the text like so. We can turn off the background layer and we can just mess with them within this layer list, which makes life really easy. We can also then click on any of the individual layers and change the position, the size, the angle, and do all this sort of fun stuff. There's also a mask input. So if we wanted to contain all of that merge within a square, we can do. Simple. Now you're probably going to be doing this a lot. So what I recommend is to add the multi-merge to your quick access bar in the middle. If you simply right click anywhere within the quick access bar, go to customize and then create toolbar. I'm just gonna call this Alex and then click okay. Then I'm gonna grab my multi-merge, which I've already added. I'm just gonna bring it over to here and then we can choose where we want it to go. So I've just got my mouse held. That's my merge, so I'm gonna put it next to merge. We now have this new one, which is our multi-merge. So whenever we need it, we click, we drag, it's there, ready to go. That's the new multi-merge tool in a nutshell. There is a little bit more to it, but that gives you a real quick overview. Next up, they snuck in a really handy little keyboard shortcut called Select All Under Playhead. And it does exactly what you'd expect. You can just hit this keyboard shortcut and everything that's currently directly underneath the playhead is selected so you can move it around on your timeline. Sounds simple, but this actually couldn't be done before. Now the default keyboard shortcut is Alt, Shift and V if you're on Windows, which is Option, Shift and V if you're on a Mac. But of course you can change it if you want to, so let me show you how. So from the edit page, I'm just gonna go to DaVinci Resolve and then Keyboard Customization, and this Keyboard Customization window will appear. Then from the search box over on the right-hand side, simply type in Select All, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see your Select All Clips under Playhead. You can either click in the box to change the keyboard shortcut, 
or even add an additional keyboard shortcut if you wish. Then simply hit save. While we're here, I've got another real quick keyboard shortcut which I recommend everyone learns, and that's Alt and Y. That will select everything under the playhead and everything after the playhead. It's super useful for just creating gaps on your timeline. So that's Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, Y, and job done. Next up, they've changed the default behavior of the retime curve. Now it goes to retime speed rather than retime frame, which makes doing slow motion or speeding things up, speed ramping much easier. So if I right click on this clip, I go to retime curve, it will now default to this retime speed where it used to be retime frame. So this is our 100% play speed. If I hold the Alt or Option key, we can click on there to add keyframes and we can drag this line up so that bit there will play faster. And if we hit play, there we go. We can simply click on the keyframes and smooth them out if we need to. If you haven't got enough room, click on this 300%, hold your mouse and drag, and you can change the scale to give you a little bit more room. Now, another quick bonus tip while we're here, if you right click and you can see Retime Curve doesn't have a keyboard shortcut assigned, but you can assign one. So once again, we'll go to DaVinci Resolve, Keyboard Shortcuts, in the search, just type Retime, and you'll see the Retime Curve, and then you can just pop a keyboard shortcut within there. I'm gonna go with Alt and C, click Save, and now because this Retime Speed is the default, whenever we wanna do any slowing down, slow motion, speed ramping, I can hit Alt, C, we're straight on the retime speed and we're good to go. Good job, small things, big impact. Now the last one is the one I teased at the beginning and that is these circular frames. They've added a new effect on the edit page, again, free and studio users, which makes it easier to do this. But it wasn't quite good enough, so I've improved it. But let me show you how it works. So I've got two tracks set up, one above the other. My webcam kind of shot is on the top. Now if we simply go to effects from within the effects library, scroll down, there's a new effect called shape circle. Drop that on there and then you'll simply have a white circle by default. Open up the inspector, go to effects. You can change the level, the soft edge, the border width of this white circle. But if you come down to apply as mask, that will then turn that white circle into a mask. So then you can just change the position to put it wherever you want. You then also need to go to the standard transform controls to move it into the right position. And there you go. But I wasn't quite happy with it. I figured they could do so much more by adding like colored borders or drop shadows. So I made one. It's free to download. It's over on my Kofi page. You know the drill by now. You can put however much you want to donate in the box or put a zero in the box to download it completely for free. You'll get a DRFX file. Just double click to open up DaVinci Resolve and install. Once it is installed, it sits in the exact same place. So underneath the shape circle, once installed, you'll see shape circle version two. Drop that on there. It will default to the mask by default. So you don't have to click that. You've got all of the same controls. So you move it wherever you want it like so. But if you scroll down, you now also have a border size. So you can increase or decrease the border. If you change the colors, you can change the color of that border. And you can also change the controls for a drop shadow because I've put a drop shadow on there by default. Scroll to the very top, there's four different versions. So there's a circle, there's a rectangle on number two, number three is a square, and number four is a star. Now this is actually a simple polygon control. So underneath the preview window, click on the little drop down, go to the fusion overlay, and you'll get these controls. You can actually move all of the points around. You can rotate, grab any of these points and move it and make this shape whatever shape you want it to be. On the edit page, you just sort of click and drag, but if you want proper control in the top right-hand corner of the Shape Circle V2, click your little magic wand icon, and it'll take you directly over to the Fusion page, and then within here, you've got all of the standard polygon controls within there. You can smooth things out, do whatever you want to do. You'd even keyframe it if you wanted to. Easy peasy. And that's it. Those are a bunch of things which just save a little bit of time doing small little things in DaVinci Resolve 18.5. If you like this video, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.